Hi all, I have another interesting game to show you from the Town Memorial 2018. Vichy Anand against Daniel Dubov. So this is round one. E4, we have a Sicilian defense. Daniel Dubov playing a Sicilian. Knight f3, knight c6. And now a kind of anti Sveshnikov line, bishop b5. If black was going to actually play the Sveshnikov, this is a nuisance. G6, and white just doubles the pawns without waiting for anything like a6. So this is a very popular continuation. White castles now, bishop g7. Rook e1, knight h6, c3, black castles. H3, F5, E5, Knight F7, D3, A5, Bishop F4, E6, Queen D2, H6, as though G5 is going to happen. H4 stops that. Rook E8, C4, fixing down C5. This could be a target later. and also gives the Knight a nice square there. So the C3 square to come to. So after D6, Knight C3. Rook a7, this rook might be able to swing optimistically later for some sort of attack from the queen side to the king side. Knight a4, putting the pressure on c5 here. Now g5, so black tries to break the bind of the position. White takes, knight takes is, um, sorry, not played. H takes g5 is played. It's here, white plays, knight takes g5, giving up a center pawn to win that flank pawn in a way knight takes e5 now bishop takes e5 this does carry some risk here because black is threatening things like bishop h6 and rook h7 and to many people this be many players i suspect this to be quite scary for white uh, is is there enough uh, to do here for white to stop this kind of thing well knight f3 is very important perhaps to stop that pin and put pressure on e5 you can see that, uh, yeah, this this would be not a good idea. Knight takes bishop h6. Ouch. Nasty pin. So uh, very cautious and necessary to bring the knight back. Bishop f6. And actually, yeah, winning that pawn on e5. Yeah, black is suffering here. That c8 bishop in particular is locked in. It's like a prisoner in its own pawn chain as it often is actually in many different variations rook h7 queen f4 white is getting a stranglehold on dark squares the key e5 square especially bishop g5 queen g3 rook g7 unpinning queen f3 queen d6 and now white just builds up on the e5 knight so rook a1 here rook g5 queen e3 targeting c5 now Black's in a pretty desperate state. And look at that bishop, it's such a total prisoner. This domination of the chessboard here. But this line is actually, it has got a reputation for getting a, a dominating dark square grip. In any case, this taking on c6. Often e5 and c5 are targets in this system. But here it's just vividly demonstrated that you know Black's in huge trouble. This is a very desperate move now, f4. Queen takes f4, rook f8. Rook e3, so simplifying soon with rook g3. Rook f7, rook g3. A pair of rooks come off. The knight couldn't have taken, by the way, because the queen would be uh, taken, so that's uh, not happening. Queen takes g3 check. Rook g7, queen goes back to e3. Yeah, black really hasn't got an attack here. Rook g5. The knight does come back here. Rook f3. Oh, sorry, rook f5. Now knight c3, the big idea of knight e4 now. Of the bishop d4, instead of responding to this threat, just knight e4 attacking black's queen. And yeah, given that white is two pawns up and this bishop's still a prisoner at the moment, uh, black resigned here. I'll give you an example continuation. If we just simplify, say, with queen f4, knight takes. This is just just totally lost for black look at this position it's totally dominating or if the queen uh, went back well white is two pawns up anyway so white can afford to undouble the pawns here play a track this is a big position for white it's pretty lost for black at this level especially yeah so 
Anand playing in a very dominant fashion here in this game, tactically, positionally, keeping that c8 bishop a prisoner for much of the game. So very impressive, instructive stuff. Hope you got something from it. Comments, questions, likes, shares appreciated. Thanks very much.